as we continue our journey into Advent and celebrate Christmas. The theme for today, if you haven't uh, caught on, you must be living under a rock. The theme for the day is joy. It's not uh, just my wife's middle name or Phil's mum's name, but uh, joy in relation to the story of Joseph and the birth of Jesus. The idea of joy is written large in the nativity stories, in the biblical accounts and the songs and the poems associated with Christmas. For example, in the prophecy relating to the birth of Christ, Isaiah 9, verse 3, you have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. Then in the New Testament stories, when Mary visited her relative Elizabeth, we read in Luke 1, that as soon as Mary greeted Elizabeth, the baby in Elizabeth's womb leapt for joy. And when Elizabeth gave birth to John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus and who also announced the coming of Jesus, her neighbours shared Elizabeth's joy. And then also in Luke 2, verse 10, the story of the angel visiting the shepherds. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Then there are the numerous songs of poetry that mentions the word joy. As with gladness men of old has these words, so may we with holy joy, and also thou its light, its joy, its crown. Hark the herald angels sing mentions joyful all ye nations rise. And then of course the opus of the word joy. We sang it this morning, joy to the world. Talks of joy to the world, the Lord has come. And joy to the world, the Saviour reigns. Yet despite this overt attention to joy in relation to the birth of Christ, there was not much in that original setting leading up to and the birth of Christ itself that was really happy, enjoyable or full of pleasure. For instance, Mary was a young woman, a virgin and also unmarried and she was chosen by God to be the mother of Jesus. Let's try to get our minds around the enormity of this. In the context of the culture of the day, Mary may have only been 12 or 13 years of age. And she is pregnant. Therefore, she would have faced great difficulties. Being pregnant before marriage was highly embarrassing, shocking, shameful, and would likely have called caused her to be rejected by her family and her friends. Furthermore, her future child would also face humiliation and mistreatment as he grew up. Not really a situation to be joyful about, yet Mary accepted God's plan for her life. She honoured God, she magnified God's name and rejoiced in God, despite the unfavourable circumstances in which she found herself. Then there was gentlemen, then there was Joseph. Then there's Joseph. Now gentlemen, gentlemen, just try to imagine this scenario. Your girlfriend is pregnant. Well, more than your girlfriend, she's actually your fiance. She's pregnant. And the child is not yours. You are still a virgin, and she is supposed to be as well. Not really a situation to spark joy, is it? This was surely a difficult situation for Joseph to find himself in, one which had the potential to destroy his relationship with Mary. For Mary to become pregnant before they were married created a very awkward situation. Mary was on her own when God's plan had been announced to her. Joseph had not heard God's plan explained, so how was he expected to understand? How could he believe anything other than that Mary had been unfaithful to him, 
If not that, then she had been attacked and raped by someone such as a Roman soldier. With Mary pregnant before they were married, some would accuse Joseph of being immoral. Those who did not accuse Joseph would no doubt blame Mary for being immoral. Those who doubted Mary would laugh at Joseph for staying with such an unfaithful woman. Now the really serious side of this was that the religious law at the time gave an engaged man the right to order the stoning to death of the one he was engaged to if that person was unfaithful. And it certainly looked as if Mary had been unfaithful. Despite this dreadful situation, this seemingly joyless situation that Joseph found himself in, he deeply loved Mary. Sadly though, he knew that he would have to break off his relationship with her and he wanted to do this on the quiet so as to not to cause any further shame, embarrassment for himself or for Mary. But just as he was about to do this, he had a dream where God spoke to him and these words we read from the scripture. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. While this made a huge difference to Joseph and to Mary and to their relationship, it still could not prevent other people thinking what they wanted to think about their situation. Then what about the census taken by the Roman government? There was Mary about to pop, having to travel with Joseph to Bethlehem to have their names registered. This was a dusty and tiring trip of about 115 kilometres walking and riding on a smelly donkey. And when they arrived, all the accommodation was already taken and they had to stay in a cattle shed. I grew up on a farm. I know what a cattle shed is like. And here Mary gives birth to the baby Jesus and places him in a cattle feed trough as his crib. Not really conditions conducive to joy, one would imagine. Yet Mary and Joseph did this as their life together unfolded and in doing so they were fulfilling prophecy in relation to the coming of Christ. Then to cap things off, after the baby had been born, Joseph and Mary had to pack up and flee to Egypt to escape a despot of a king, King Herod, who through rage and jealousy had ordered the killing of all boys in and around Bethlehem two years and under. Just in case, just in case, a boy had been born who might grow up to be a rival king to his throne. Again, not really a situation that promoted joy. Yet Joseph and Mary took all of this in their stride. And once Herod had died, they returned from Egypt. But they didn't go back to their hometown. They went back to Nazareth rather than to Judea because they feared possible repercussions from Herod's son. So despite the embarrassment, the shame, the rejection, the homelessness and the seeking of asylum associated with the birth of Christ, there also appears to be an overwhelming sense of joy. Jesus Christ was born and this brought great joy to all people, for all people. This apparent conundrum between circumstances and attitudes or feelings or understandings leads me to think that joy is something greater, something much more profound than happiness, cheerfulness, contentment, bliss, delight, pleasure, gladness, fun and the like. Joy is not certainly the same as happiness. We, happiness can simply be a fleeting sense that things are great at a particular moment in time. 
or it can be that we are simply having fun. However, it's actually possible to have fun without having real joy in our life. Furthermore, it's also possible to have joy when we are not particularly happy. Therefore, joy is in its essence a deep sense of peace and security and wholeness despite conditions and circumstances. Joy is that deep sense, that deep sense of peace, security, wholeness, despite external circumstances and conditions. Joy can rise up sp spontaneously, as it did for the angels and many others associated with the birth of Christ. Yet joy can also be a quiet sense of an all rightness and goodness in our world. A quiet sense that even in our busiest time, our worst situations, our most disastrous circumstances, we know that we are being held in God's hands. The story we just heard from the Gospels of that first Christmas begins with anything but joy. Joseph and Mary are being forced about by the authorities of the Roman Empire, ordered by their occupiers to travel, to be uh, registered for a census, expelled to a cattle shed, and there Mary gives birth in the most inhospitable surroundings. And yet the shepherds out in the field heard the angels sing with their announcement of great joy. And this is the way, this is the way that the Christian church has remembered that first holy night. This story captures the deepest Christian conviction that God took on flesh in that child and lived amongst us. That child grew to adulthood, lived, loved, taught, died and lived beyond death. And in those events, we can see everything we need to know of who God is. In that birth of that tiny baby, we can see and know everything there is to know about who God is. In that tiny, vulnerable human life, humankind has seen and touched the very face of God. Now, while there is no way, of course, to prove that joy is actually at the heart of life, there is one thing that we can know, that those who believe the angel's message and trust that joy is at the heart of everything, those who have come to faith in the Christ child, those who have managed to live that truth no matter what, have found immense resources, have found calmness and hope, even in the worst of time. Furthermore, they have found their lives more full, more joyful and more alive. Finally, to have glimpsed that Christ child, to have seen his birth through faith, to know Christ as one poet expresses it, the maker of the stars and sea, became a child on earth for you and me. To know this is to have been given a joy beyond measure, a joy indescribable, yet a joy complete. May this be our experience today. Please allow me to share a prayer with you. Advent God, we journey with you to the world of Mary. So young and innocent, your chosen vessel for the incarnation, bearing much intrigue and suspicion, yet expressing such joy. Advent God, we go with you to the mind of Joseph, so in love with his intended, thrown into chaos with an unexpected pregnancy, facing such indignation and accusation yet conveying such joy. Advent God, we travel you, with you on a donkey in the dust with Joseph and Mary. At census time, everything is full in a cattle shed with straw-filled crib. A baby boy is born. The Lord has come for the world, such joy. Advent God, 
We trek with you, fleeing to Egypt, escaping a tyrant of a king, crossing inhospitable land, three refugees, with an uncertain future and existence, yet articulating such joy. Advent God, we come with you to this time in the present, each with our own needs and desires, problems and issues, trials and tribulations, yet through faith in that Christ child, we can know such joy. Amen. <laughs>